Hi there. Hope you're having a great day. You know, if you're watching this video, you probably have a little pile of uh, junk batteries sitting somewhere in your house, and uh, you always wonder if some of, some of these batteries are actually good, or are they all all shot and, and gone bad? Um, so that thought definitely crosses my mind and my wife's mind on occasion. Um, and, um, you know, on something like, for something like this, I would reach for my multimeter, you know, to do a quick test, see if the battery is good. But when you have a whole pile like this, um, it's easier to use a simple tester versus a multimeter. Uh, at least that's what my wife says. And um, I was wondering what I can do about that. So I be, I came across these, um, you know, cheap battery testers that you can find on Amazon or eBay. They sell for around that $10 mark. Um, you know, but for that price point, you're never really sure are they any good because in a battery tester, you want accurate results. And if they are not going to be accurate, what's the point, right? So I'm going to show you a battery tester that I picked up. This is an EBL battery tester, uh, but they are available in so many brands. A lot of times these um, are, you know, manufactured by some Chinese manufacturer and different companies pick them up, throw their labels on them and, and they sell them like that. So the one that I have is the EBL, and we'll take a look and uh, see if they're any good. Okay, so this is the product that I picked up. It's the EBL battery tester. Uh, it is a bit of a unique design. I've seen online multiple battery testers for that $10 price point. Um, the design on this was a bit unique because uh, I want to show you what you will normally find if you go look for battery testers online. Um, so if I just give you a quick feel for it on my my iPad here, this is probably one of the more uh, popular designs. It has a spring action thing going on too, so you can stick their battery right here and it, it can accommodate a variety of battery sizes. But all it does is give you a green, red, or yellow indication. A lot of these battery testers at this price point give you that kind of a test. It doesn't do an actual read. Um, so you can see how this thing works in this picture. There are this design as well. So they come in variety of uh, variety of uh, shapes and sizes. If you buy a battery storage unit like this, sometimes they will throw in a unit like this right there in the box as a freebie because uh, they are that cheap. Um, so I didn't care for, for these kind of battery testers. By the way, these don't do 9 volt battery testing. And this was part of the reason why I went with the EBL battery tester because it does do the 9 volt test as well. So let me show you what the unit actually says or has um, obviously nothing much in the box has a little thank you um, note in there and then it's the battery tester itself not a whole lot to expect from a ten dollar unit um, but the main unit itself is made in all plastic and um, you know the design like i said is a bit different so in here, it also has this battery action. Hopefully you can see that spring in there. Um, so that's what it has. It can accommodate different batteries. And here you can stick in a nine volt battery to do your testing. And then it has a fairly large read on what the, the reading is. There's a on off button right here. Um, very little one that you can toggle to switch it on and off. Um, and it accepts a nine volt battery in here also, so I have already put that in uh, for convenience, and uh, so that's what it what it takes. But nothing much about the the, the unit itself. Um, one other thing, maybe that I can point out is, which is actually you know nice to have since it doesn't do the green, yellow, red indication. It gives you this chart, so hopefully you can read this on your screen. It has a full chart, so if you put a new battery or a battery that is supposed to be in good condition. It should be somewhere near the full number, right? So for a 1.5 volt battery, like a AA or a AAA battery, you're expecting a 1.5 volt charge. And if it goes around that 1.0 volt uh, charge, then it's probably coming to the cutoff. So that's what the cutoff basically represents, that it's anything lower than that, it definitely has to be discarded. But uh, anywhere around that number 1.0 or 1.1, it's going to be a pretty weak battery and you will have to throw it out. A lot of people are under the impression that if the battery is is 1.5 and it's at one, well, it has still got some juice so I can use it, 
but the reality is uh, there is this cutoff and below that it, it's going to be no good for you so uh, that chart is actually very handy so next what we want to do is actually test out some batteries and see what the results are okay so to conduct this test i have my multimeter uh, which is going to give us a more a reliable and accurate result because it is a more expensive unit compared to a ten dollar battery tester and i also have these variety of batteries in front of me which are going to put through uh, a side-by-side -side test and see what the measurements are and at the end of this exercise we would know whether the test results from this uh, sub ten dollar battery tester is any good and if it's a keeper or you should uh, not consider buying anything of this kind so before we get started, I wanted to also use one of these um, button batteries or coin batteries, whatever you want to call them. These are lithium batteries uh, that a lot of these devices uh, use. This battery tester cannot test one of these, although my multimeter can handle it. But this battery tester cannot test these kind of batteries. OK, so I wanted to say that up front. So you are aware that we are not going to be including this type of battery in this test. So I'm going to put that aside and um, actually go through the rest of the batteries. So first, let's start off with the 9-volt batteries. Okay, these are pretty common batteries um, that I picked up uh, to conduct this test. So first, let me turn on my multimeter and then just locate which is the negative. This is the negative end. So I'm going to use my black probe on the negative end and use my red probe on the positive end. And as you can see, it gives me a reading of 7.9. So it's a 9 volt battery and it's a charge shows me a voltage of 7.9 and it's not not very good. Um, let me turn this battery tester on now and uh, actually compare the test results. So this was 7.9 out here. And if I compare this on the battery tester, it shows us a reading of 7.85, which is pretty good. You know, it's on the third digit that you see of variance. So the test result on, on this particular battery was pretty good. Let me put this aside. Let's try with another battery just to make sure it's not a fluke. Um, so this time I'm going to locate the negative end, put my probe over there, and then put my, my positive. And uh, here we can see the result is around that 1.996. It's hovering around that mark, 1.93 or 9.2. Uh, yeah, I don't know why it's fluctuating a little bit. Let me try it one more time. It's actually around that uh, one point. It keeps dropping, as you can see. Um, so it's 1.83. I will take it as that and use the battery tester this time and check what the results are. So on here, we see the results are at 1.7. Um, I think if I had to use this for a little longer, probably have given me the, a similar result. So that's that one. And now let's test a AA battery. This one is giving us a reading of 1.07. So this is a pretty weak battery. I won't be able to use it, uh, but I wanted to use it to show you the reading anyhow. So 1.07 and out here with the battery tester, it shows us a test result of 1.043, somewhere there. Um, so it's pretty close. Now let's uh, also compare this against a brand new AA battery. I think many of you are going to be using AA and AAA batteries for the most part. Uh, so let's get this time test done properly. 1.59 is the reading on this brand new 1.5 volt AA Duracell battery. And when I check this against the battery tester, it gives me a reading of 1.56. So 1.5956, again, really, really close. So that's the result on that one. Let's check a AAA because this is yet another very common battery uh, that I think many of you would be using. So let's check what the voltage is on this. It says 0.45. So this is 
pretty much shot. Let's uh, compare this against the battery tester. Point four two. So you can see it, it's a very, very close result on the battery tester. Let's do one more AAA. This time it's a brand new AAA battery. Um, so I know this is a good battery. Let's uh, test this one. This one reads at 1.58, so it's a it's a pretty full battery. And uh, testing against the battery tester, it gives us a result of 1.55. So again, really, really close results. You will notice that uh, it's not identical, but then, you know, this is a much more sophisticated multimeter, and this is a $10 unit. So it's doing a pretty good job of giving us a fairly reliable result in terms of whether the battery is a keeper or not, because ultimately that's really what you're trying to test. So this battery is a type C. This is again a 1.5 volt battery. It's a, not a very common battery size people use, but I wanted to use it anyway to show that the battery tester can handle this. Um, this one is reading at 1.55. So this is a pretty full battery. Um, comparing it against the tester, it shows us a test result of about 1.5152. So again, really close. And the last test that we're gonna do is this type D battery. Uh, this one is maybe a little bit more uh, popular battery compared to the type C, uh, but it's the largest battery that this tester can handle. So let's quickly check what the result is on this. So I'm gonna put my probes and it shows me that it's at 1.57. So this is a 1.5 volt battery. Um, as you can probably read here, it's pretty full, 1.57 on the multimeter. And putting it in the battery tester, um, it shows us a result of 1.54. So again, a really close reading. It's on the third digit that it goes off a little bit. So. All in all, you know, in my view, this battery tester is doing a pretty good job. I think I can reach out to this battery tester instead of my multimeter and do a quick test, see if the battery is good. If it's good, it's it can be still reused. If not, it goes into my junk pile. And, um, you know, I think the wife is gonna like it as well. So from my perspective, this is a good battery tester worth the money. Um, and more importantly, it gives you that peace of mind um, which is really what you're looking for with it with a testing unit um, anyhow uh, i hope you like this uh, little video to um, see if a battery tester like this or something that you find online because they sell this in multiple designs uh, whether that is useful or not um, and you liked uh, the content in this video if you did please share and like the video and please subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next one thank you Bye-bye.